Hello, my name's Steve Mann and welcome to Paper Classroom. In this module we're going to be looking at drying and we will answer the questions what are the methods of drying paper and board? What do we mean by heat transfer and mass transfer? How does a drying cylinder actually work? And why is airflow so important? Okay, let's start with the drying methods. There are a vast range of ways of drying paper, board and tissue, coated papers, uncoated papers. By far the most common way of drying paper itself is the contact method. Essentially, slapping a sheet of hot, wet fibres onto a hot surface and pulling them off when it's dried. For coated products, where you can't really have any contact with a, a surface, then infrared is a very common method of drying. Air impingement and air float are two other techniques often used where you don't want the sheet to come into contact with the surface. Through air drying is used on many grades of tissue from facial and toilet tissue, kitchen tissue, even uh, things like tea bag. And finally there's microwave. Microwave was an experimental method, it's not been widely used but is more used for correcting profiles than actually completely drying the sheet. Okay, let's, let's start off with the heat transfer. We said what is heat transfer and what is mass transfer? Well essentially heat transfer is moving heat from its source to the place that you want it to be. And here we have a good example in a typical paper mill, paper machine drying cylinder. Here we put a lot of steam into the drying cylinder. It isn't the heat of the steam itself that is transferred to the dry shell, but when the steam condenses it undergoes a phase change. It goes from being virtually a gas to being a liquid and in doing so it gives up huge amounts of energy that we call latent heat. That heat will eventually dry the paper. But on its way, on its path, there are restrictions. And this is illustrated here. So imagine this is a cylinder filled full of steam. We've already said the steam condenses, so if it condenses, it forms water. And with a typical drying cylinder, if the cylinder's moving at over about 300 meters a minute, or the sheets being made at over 300 meters a minute, the condensed water will be thrown against the edge or internal edge of the drying cylinder in what we call rimming and here it forms a layer that's quite a good insulator so not all the heat from the steam will be able to get through this layer of water because of its insulating properties. Okay, water that comes from the uh, boilers is never 100% pure, pure. that can be carryover and this can form scale on the inside of the drying cylinder. So this second black ring here represents scale on the inside of a drying cylinder due to carryover. And that too will restrict the flow of heat. This band here represents the shell of the drying cylinder itself. And then outside of that we have more scale. As the sheet goes over the drying cylinder it comes into contact with the cylinder. Whatever is in the water has the opportunity to come out and stick to the drying cylinder surface. Fibres can get pulled out of the sheet. Filler particles can get pulled out of sheet. So they can form a dirty layer on the outside of the drying cylinder, which is also a restriction to heat. Just beyond that, there is then a slight air gap if you can imagine that sheet being pressed hard against a very hot surface, what's going to happen? The steam is going to be produced. And when steam tries to be produced, then it will push away 
it will try to push away from the surface of the drying cylinder because moisture always moves towards the source of heat. And by pushing away at the surface, then it will try and push the sheet away from the surface. And this is why felt tensions are so important in the drying system. And then finally, you have the paper itself. And although the inside surface of the paper is in contact with the drying cylinder, the thickness of the paper itself will also be a restriction to drying the opposite side of the paper. So I think that covers heat transfer very, very basically for the moment. Now we talk about mass transfer. Mass transfer is just a posh way of saying moving the water from one place to another place. From where it is to where you want it to be. And essentially, it's just like drying the washing on the line. You do your everyday washing, you peg it out onto the line, you leave it, and what happens? You get mass transfer. The water evaporates. So it sounds like a posh term, but that's all we're really doing with the uh, drying paper. We heat up the paper, the heat transfers into the water, the water gets more energy, it evaporates, and the paper becomes dry and the air around it becomes wet. And that leads us on to another topic that we'll cover in a moment after the next slide, which is uh, the importance of airflow. Okay, so we said we would talk about drying cylinders and how the drying cylinders work. Well, you've already had part of the story. Here's an example of one drying cylinder. Essentially, we push heat in into the drying cylinder under pressure, therefore um, drying cylinders are, are classed as pressure vessels. We push the steam in, the steam condenses, it gives up its latent heat and it undergoes a phase change and becomes water. If the paper you're producing or board or tissue is running on a very slow machine, you will end up with a puddle of water at the bottom. As the machine goes faster and faster, then that puddle will become what's called a, a climbing puddle, then a cascading puddle, and ultimately you will get this phenomenon known as rimming. Water inside a drying cylinder is always bad news, so we need to get rid of it. And the way we get rid of it is with a, uh, a device called a siphon. It has other names, uh, buckets, scoops, spoons, straws, but essentially, because this is a pressure vessel, this is one way of escaping. So we push steam in, a lot of the steam condenses, some of the steam finds this pathway out, comes up and away. And it will carry with it the water that's collected at the bottom. And these siphons, there are essentially two types of siphon. There are uh, fixed siphons and the rotating siphons. A fixed siphon like this one here, will always be pointing down. A rotating siphon, the end will be uh, fastened to the uh, inside surface of the drying cylinder and it will rotate with the drying cylinder. And there's a lot more goes on in the drying cylinder uh, and that's really the topic of a, of a full-blown course but for now it's just important to know that when the water goes in and condenses we need a means of taking it out and therefore we use the siphon. The material that comes out of the drying cylinder is what we call blow-through steam. It's a mixture of hot water and steam. And what we do is we separate those two. The hot water will go back to the boiler system and the steam will go forward into the system to another dry section or another drier uh, drum. And uh, this we call the, the cascade system of reusing steam. Okay, the final slide in this section is airflow. Airflow is so important. You can get much better control of drying by controlling airflow than you can by pumping heat in and just wasting the pounds and increasing the, the carbon footprint. And a good example of this is, think about washing. You hang out a line full of washing on a typical bright sunny day it's an absolute still day, not a 
got a bit of wind anywhere and that washing will take all day to dry if it dries at all because what happens is the moisture in these things increases in temperature that causes the molecules of moisture to be excited they jump up off the surface and fall back down up off the surface fall back down all day long and they create just around each of these articles a micro atmosphere of saturated air and because the air is saturated with moisture then no matter how hot these claws get there's no incentive for the moisture to jump from here into that layer because there's just as much moisture in the layer as there is in the clothing. Now imagine we have a much less sunny day it's warm but not hot but there's a huge amount of wind blowing well what happens now? The weaker sun heats the clothing, heats the moisture, the moisture molecules will still get excited, they jump a little bit off the surface but before they get the chance to fall back then the wind has blown them away and so you never get the opportunity to develop around here this micro atmosphere of saturated air and because you don't get that there is every incentive for the moisture in here to leap up and fill that space so on a not so hot day with a strong wind blowing this line of washing will dry much much quicker and you know there's a whole lot more to the science of drying uh, you know there are topics like pocket ventilation if you look at the very old paper machines they were all completely open and what happened when they were completely open the steam evaporated from the paper it filled the areas between the drying cylinders itself and it just hung around there on the edges of the paper, on the edges of the machine there was um, lots of drafts blowing so that air would be replaced with dry air but in the center of the machine it would stay moist so the edges would dry faster than the middle that would cause either a break in the machine because the edge would become too taut or if you control the edge tension then the middle will become too slack and you'd end up with creasing problems and moisture profiles moisture problems um, so paper makers eventually realized this and they started to enclose the machines and if you look at a modern paper machine now it's completely enclosed and we have total control of moisture coming into the paper machine drying section area and air and moisture coming out of the paper machine and what we tend to do is we bring in hot dry air we use that to push out hot moist air the hot moist air will pass through a heat exchanger and that's how we heat up the incoming air okay so that comes to the end of our introduction for drying I hope you've enjoyed this uh, taster session on drying and I look forward to seeing you on one of my face-to-face uh, -face courses in the future